The future of tourism in Uganda and Africa looks much brighter than it did 10 years ago, but not entirely. Many of the tourist attractions, especially wildlife and nature, are facing times of uncertainty. For example, Africa now has only about 35,000 lions roaming its savannas, and some scientists estimate the numbers will have reduced drastically by 2050. In Africa, poachers kill about 100 elephants every day, leaving their population in a region less than 400,000. Uganda has about 5,000 of these. The once magnificent waterfalls of Africa, and in Uganda specifically, now have electricity dams. This phenomena suggests that culture tourism will be the anchor of tourism in the future. Culture tourism is mostly concerned with the country or a region's culture, the lifestyle and the history of the people, their art, architecture and religion. This therefore calls for need to record and preserve heritage. Uganda is making a stride here, but a list of things still lack. A lot of the country's historical sites and buildings are not yet on record. Some have been destroyed, and their important stories turned into mere folklore. The Cross Culture Foundation of Uganda, a non-government organization working to preserve the country's heritage, think they can redeem the situation. It's respect of the efforts of people who have gone before us. Because uh, many of us would like to be able to say we have done certain things and the evidence of the things that we have done are reflected in the buildings. So far, the Cross Culture Foundation have profiled about 60 historical buildings and sites, which are just a few of the thousands that dot towns and the countryside across the country. The Hamukasa House in Lubaga Kampala is one of the exceptional buildings. Thought to be more than 120 years old, this house has kept the story of a great man alive. An influential figure in Uganda's history, Hamukasa was pivotal to a number of events and activities between the 1880s and 1956. He converted to Christianity in childhood and survived martyrdom. He was involved a lot in the Mengo government politics and religious wars that led several Baganda Muslims to seek refuge in Inkore. He also led the reinstallation of Kabaka Mwanga to a throne he had lost to his Muslim brother Kalima. Mukasa would later become even more influential as a Chagwe County chief in 1905. All that time, this house sitting on about four acres was his home, as he documents in one of his memoirs. It was, it was even a storied structure, according to his writings in his famous books, Semud Danyuma. I think in 1898, somewhere there, they had some wars here. And he had uh, some uh, tanks of uh, uh, gunpowder, yes, uh, which caught fire. So the upper part, I think, was destroyed because of that fire. And maybe uh, because he had become lame, as, as you may have known, he was hit when he was at Bulingug Island, when they were fighting in those famous 1888 uh, Christian Islam wars. So I think he couldn't uh, entertain going up and down. His grandchildren take care of the home, and everything in here is as it were 100 years ago. The furniture, a gramophone, artworks, and Mukasa's home library, which he loved so much, is still in existence. One can visit this home on appointment and pay a small fee to be shown around. Because when you're educating the young people about, um, for instance, the traditional kingdoms, the evidence of the existence of Bunyoro Kingdom, of Ankole Kingdom, is, or Toro Kingdom, is found in the buildings which are there. Otherwise, it's just a story. Many of the historical buildings are private. There is no arrangement to pay owners to preserve the important heritage. And we can try and engage policymakers and say this is important to our heritage as a country. Can we invest in it as Ugandans, as a government of Uganda? When you're talking about tourism, it's not only about gorillas, it's about the people, it's about their history. The Anglican and Catholic Church in Uganda have several historical sites and buildings. In Jinja municipality, clearly not Sebo is the St. Joseph Cathedral on Lubaga Hill. The Catholic Cathedral was completed in 1939. No changes have been made to the structure since then, except the painting on the main entrance and window edges. A statue of St. Joseph once stood on top of the main entrance, but was blown by rocket fire in 1979 by military men who probably thought it was a human spying on them. Another of Mother Mary that occupied the front space was also destroyed in the same year, when forces from Tanzania were ousting former President Idi Amin. The Catholic Church has kept a lot of tradition, and it's not the only old building we have in Uganda, as it were. We have so many, and the bishops come and go, and they still preserve the old thing they found. And not only the structure, but 
all other things. Down here at the diocese, we have an archive where all the stories and all the old writings are found. A church like this one does not charge visitors, but its story remains with it as not so many Ugandans are inquisitive about historical buildings and sites. Jinja, like Kampala and Entebbe, hosts many historical buildings and sites. They are all priceless. And in this day when the country is looking ahead to the prospects of tourism, it is only right that they are preserved. Frank Olisembi, NTV.